Welcome. It's great to be part of this conversation about the future of our cities. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about our vision for the edible city. And for those of you just are thinking about the question right now is, uh, what, what is the edible city and are we actually going to be eating our city? My answer to that question or that thought is, yes, we are. And tonight, I'm going to be talking about how we're going to do it and why we should be doing it. Um, so think about the idea of an edible city. About 13 years ago, we uh, were driving down a street not too far from here, and we were looking for a place to put a farm in the middle of the city. And we stumbled on a piece of property, and it backed up to a low-income school, and it was next to a senior center, and it was kind of fronted on a pretty busy street, and we said, this might be the place to do it. Well, at the time, the landowner was not home, and so we jumped over the fence, and we dug in the soil, and we checked it, and it was great. It was beautiful soil, and we said, okay, this is the place to do it. So we went in the driveway, and we wrote a little handwritten note, and we said, uh, wrote on there, can we grow on your land in exchange for a box of produce each week? Put it in the mailbox, didn't know what happened. The next day, a woman calls us. Her name's Elizabeth Collins, has lived in Sacramento for 60 years. And she said, okay. That's how the project started. Now, what I want to say to you at this point in time is, we weren't just thinking about growing food in the city. We were two young, idealistic young men, and we had big ideas. And we felt like if we were put a, a farm in the city, it could really address some of the biggest challenges facing human society today. And we all know what some of those challenges are, right? Population is growing. In 1910, our population was about 1.6 billion people. Fast forward to today, it's almost 7 billion, right? So with that rapid population growth, it has put, put you know, pressure on our natural resources, particularly the natural resources that we all need to grow our food, to feed our society, to, grow the, you know, to, to feed that growing population. We also, and most people don't realize this though, is that we are experiencing hunger in this country like we never have before. One in six Americans today are food insecure. And what does food insecure mean? It means that they may not know where their next meal is coming. In Sacramento, they estimate about 200,000 people are food insecure. Right, so it's a big issue in our community. We also are experiencing sickness like never before as a human society. Over 60% of Americans every year die of diet-related conditions. And the last challenge that we're facing, and, and, and this, is, this, is, this is a big one, and, and is this idea that our social and cultural fabric is beginning to fray. And paralleling that, 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 that occurrence is this similar situation where we're becoming very disconnected from our food. And not only from our food, but the lands that produce our food. And I actually just want to spend a second on this particular point because it's one of the most important justifications for manifesting an edible city, bringing food into the city. And it's this idea that if you go back through the expanse of human history, right, through the, all the time that we've been on this earth, we've had an intimate relationship with our food. It's daily, part of our daily act, the growing of the food, the hunting of food, fishing, procuring it, storing it, cooking it. It is an act that very much defines who we are. It defines our existence on this planet, right? And it also defines our interactions with one another, our social fabric. That, that simple relationship with food has changed in the blink of an eye. In 1810, 90% of Americans said that their dominant occupation was agriculture. Do you know what it is today? It's 2%. So in the expanse of 200 years, our dominant Reality has changed. Our, our relationship with food has changed. And it has had a devastating impact on our health and the health of our communities. So these were the challenges that we were thinking about when we put that note in the mailbox of Elizabeth Collins' house. Right? We weren't just going to grow food. We were going we to address some of these things. And we were going to say the city should be working actively to address some of these challenges. And even more specifically, it should be growing food for itself. It should be playing an active role in the food system. So when we started the project and fast forward 13 years, we have developed a vision for what the edible city should look like. And it has five main components that I want to talk to you about tonight. The first is actually harvesting Sacramento. So it's this idea, and most of you may not realize this, but cities are, have been placed you know, and built on some of the best agricultural land in the whole world. Sacramento 
is in the agricultural mecca. It's, it's in these valleys where soil collects and water is present. In Sacramento, we have an amazing climate. It actually, we can grow food year-round. And most cities have some capacity to produce food. So we have all of these assets as a city that we really need to be thinking about in terms of food production. The other second major point of, of the edible city is the idea, it's more of a purpose. Um, it's the idea that we not only have the capacity to produce food, in fact, in Sacramento right now, if you were to add up all the, the production from a from a home landscape and a business landscape and the small farms and stuff, we're producing in, in excess of several million pounds of food right now. But it's not going anywhere. And in fact, about a million pounds of food from your front yard and backyard gardens, fruit trees falling to the ground, is ending up our landfill and it's not serving any purpose. So we, what we decided to do is collect some volunteers and some community partners and actually go out and harvest and glean that produce, right? And then working with those partners, we would get it to our most underserved residents. I mentioned that over 200,000 people are food insecure in our community, right? We can harvest all of that food, and that asset of the community can go and feed those people. The other population is our school kids. Imagine if we could harvest food for, within the urban environment and then have that flow into our schools. Schools right now have limited budgets to, produce, to purchase fresh fruits and vegetables, and if we were growing some of that food as a city, we could get that food to our kids. Right now, there's 230,000 kids that eat at our schools every day that we could be getting this fresh produce into their bodies. So we've talked about harvesting Sacramento. We've talked about you know, um, the idea of feeding our underserved. The next aspect of the edible city is the idea of actually increasing the capacity of the urban environment to produce food. We have an amazing asset here in Sacramento, and the idea is to ratchet up our ability to grow food, to grow the edible food forest. And how do we do that? Well, the farm that I mentioned earlier is actually on privately owned land. So there's lots of residents here, whether it's a quarter acre, an eighth of an acre, or three acres like the one on Hurley Way, that we can grow food on. Our other farm is publicly owned. We have 55 acres on the American River. It's owned by Sacramento County. And we are, we're charged with growing food on that land and educating people about the healthy food. And there are a lot of other public resources like that where we can produce a lot of food on. What we need, though, to do as a community to ratchet up that capacity is we need to look at some policies. And on, towards that end, we need to, to legalize the production of food within the urban environment and actually incentivize it so that we're actually not just growing it, but we can sell it and we can distribute it within, you know, to the folks that need it the most. The fourth component of the edible city is the economy aspect of it. Most people don't realize that there is a massive amount of, of economic activity about, around just maintaining the aesthetic landscape of the urban environment, right? It's all those people mowing and blowing our lawns. That's $50 billion worth of economic activity around the United States around that, around that activity. In California, $7.2 billion. Imagine if we reskilled those that, that job base, all of those workers, and it was, you know, they, were, they were actually maintaining not just an aesthetic landscape, but a productive landscape that was feeding people at the same time. That's a meaningful job, and it's something that all cities can do. And lastly is really this, 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 this bigger concept of the edible city, and it's really about designing a city, the fabric of a city, where from a child to early adult, it's providing experiences where you're connecting with your food and, and you're understanding where it comes from. It's the educational value of the built environment, the places where we live and work. Imagine if you were a child, and in fact, Dylan is a, is a child that I want to tell you about. He grew up in Sacramento. He came to the farm, and he planted a seed at the farm, and he tended that seed, and he pulled that carrot out of the ground, that orange root with the green tops, and he washed it off, and he ate it. That experience for Dylan changed his life. It changed his relationship with food, that simple act. And ultimately, that... that that new relationship that he has with food is going to, to influence his behaviors moving forward as, as a young adult and ultimately when he raises a family. Those are things, those are experiences that the urban environment needs to provide for our community. So tonight, what I'm challenging all of you to do is to play some kind of role in manifesting the edible city, whatever it may be. And in doing that, you're reconnecting not only yourself with real and healthy food, and 
awakening that knowledge that we all have around food and ultimately unleashing the capacity of the urban environment to promote long-term health and well-being. Thank you and have a good night.